Shabbat Shalom. I've uh, brought my lulav with me this morning, and uh, the, the interesting thing about the lulav, which is shaken uh, traditionally during uh, Sukkot, is that the only day you'd never use it actually is Shabbat. But I'm going to talk about the lulav and about the worship of Israel during Sukkot. Isn't it beautiful, just as uh, Michael was sharing, that the God who, who disciplines us also loves us? And that really is that beautiful message that we share. And the wonderful thing about this time of year is that at the time of blessing, this is the time of blessing, Israel is bringing in the harvest, that's really what the lulav in some ways represents the, the beauty of the fields together with the, uh, uh, this etrog, which is uh, very fragrant. Israel is rejoicing because of all the goodness God is bringing into our midst, and, and we're rejoicing as the, the harvest comes in. But the interesting thing is, of course, at this very time, God sends us out of our house. So we leave our homes, the comfort of our homes, and go to a sukkah. We build a little sukkah. I have one in my backyard. The congregation came and joined me last week, enjoyed the sukkah, blessed the sukkah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam. We sat and enjoyed the sukkah. That is what we do when we enjoy Sukkot. What makes a sukkah, though, is actually very interesting. It's in Psalm 27, verse 5. And what makes a sukkah is what's called the skach. You know, when we bring in the harvest, we build this little shed, and then the rabbis told us, pile on top of this little tent, this thing that's a remnant of a reminder of what it was like, where we came from, what, what we were doing when we followed Moshe through the desert for 40 years. Where did we come from? We lived in tents. So we go back to that. And you build yourself a little sukkah, a little reminder of where you came from, but then you pile on top of it stuff. A skach, the roof, is very important. That's what makes a sukkah. Because the skach is supposed to be made of the husks, the twigs, the vines left over from the harvest. And the one thing that makes a skach is you can see through it. The skach actually is a reminder of this stuff we live in 24-7. Skach is a reminder of our flesh through which, even though it's just stuff, through it we have a vision of our creator. At night, you can tell you've got a good skach, a real skach, a kosher skach, because you can see the stars through it. So too, so too, through this flesh of ours, we can still see our creator. Psalm 27, verse 5, describes the two kinds of tents that Israel knows. For he will conceal me in his shelter, which... That, the word there is sukkah, on the day of trouble, and he will hide me in the folds of his tent. And that's the other kind of sukkah, the beholah, which is actually the tent of meeting, where Moses and Aharon met with God. There are actually two kinds of tents here. That's why we call this actually the Feast of Tabernacles, because... This other word gets a lot of attention, but normally, of course, a sukkah is just a small little thing. It's not all that big. And that's why it's so confusing. I, I, I grew up, <clears throat> you know, couldn't figure out why we used this word tabernacle. I kept thinking about the Mormon tabernacle, you know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> you know, actually, if it was, actually, if it was correct, the Mormons would have had a quartet, because you can't fit that many people inside a sukkah. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. 
we're coming up to Hoshana Rabbah, the great day. And this is the time when Israel celebrates. The celebration of Israel is for another reason, too. Yes, we're receiving the harvest in, but one thing we do at Sukkot, one thing we do at Sukkot also, is we pray for rain. Because we pray for the blessing to come again. We pray for that blessing to come again into our midst. And as we do so, we are not just praying for rain. Yes, Israel is praying for the rains to come and bring us another harvest for next year. But we're actually praying for something more. We're praying for something else that falls from heaven, which is the Ruach HaKodesh. We're praying for the Spirit to come. And so really to more deeply understand what Israel is doing, every day we go down from the temple, we would follow the priest going down to the, uh, uh, the uh, Brechat Shaloach, which was the uh, well of uh, Siloam, we call it. But the ancient city of David, the old city of David would go down. The, the priest would bring a jug of water, bring it back to the temple, pour it into the altar. And Israel would be crying Hoshianu, Hoshianu. I know you all know those songs that say, Hosanna, Hosanna. No, there's their cry, Hoshia, God save us. And so, and so at this time too, we remember one other thing. The words from Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. Shaftamayim b'sosor, mim hayeshua, with joy. You shall draw water from the wells of salvation. And so when Israel waves the lulav at this time of year, actually they do it very specifically. They, they pray over the lulav. First of all, Baruch Atadu and I, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sher Klishanu Ben Mitzvotah B'Tzivanu Nithatef. The lulav, actually we say the blessing with the, uh, with the stem up. And then we wave it. Wave it in a very particular way, which I'll show you. They, they actually wave it from the heart. You're facing east, which, by the way, is this way. So you'd, you'd wave it, and you'd thrust your arms out, really, from the heart, and wave it three times. Then you face the north, do the same thing, and then to the west and the south, and then back again up down. And while you're doing this, you're remembering the Psalm, Psalm 136, those words that say, Hodu l'adonai ki tov, ki olam ba'ed. Which is, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love, that is his covenant love, endures forever. So, Marty's going to come up, and we're going to sing that song, Shaftamayim B'Soson. And as I close this morning, I'm just going to tell you a little story. Many years ago, uh, my mother asked me the question, uh, because she had become aware I'd become a follower of Yeshua. And uh, she said to me, um, how can uh, Jesus be the Messiah? His, his, name, his name isn't even in the in the Jewish Bible. I don't see Jesus anywhere in the Jewish Bible. And I said to her, oh, yes, it is, Mom. Remember those words? With joy you shall draw water from the wells of salvation. There is the name of our Messiah. There he is. And a few years later, just before she passed away, my mother made Yeshua her Messiah too. So this is a very precious song. Marty, just lead us into worship as we remember what God has done so preciously and wonderfully for us. Though he disciplines us, he never fails to continue in his love for Israel. Amen. You're going to sing it with us? Sure, why not? Too bad Ben didn't too bad Ben didn't bring his fiddle. He's a great fiddler. So. <laughs> Let's try it slow. Who shall tell my 
My, 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 my,